All right, so today what we're going to talk about is our big boy solar system. And this is kind of a, a little bit of engineering and pushing over a little bit in the communication side. You're going to see when I start talking about this uh, why you kind of have to have a little bit of an engineering mind, really more of an electrical mind. And you're also going to see why wow, this relates into communications. So without further ado, let's talk about that. My name is Arthur and I'm the founder and CEO for Tackleberry Solutions. We teach wartime tactics for citizens uh, for civil defense purposes and today we're going to talk about that thing over there, that monstrosity. That is a 300 watt panel, three battery solar charging system. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take you off the tripod, we're going to walk you into the rain and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Alright, so what you got here is uh, three sets of 100 watt panel systems from Harbor Freight and I'm using salt treated uh, lumber to hold them up and build the framework for them. Now let me explain to you why I went with these. There's a couple different reasons. One, and what it really is is four 25 watt panels. So I really have 12 25 watt panels and I know most guys are like what the hell guy that's a lot of wiring. Yes it is but if something happens to this panel, guess what? I only lose 25 watts of panel. I still have 75 watts pushing. Whereas, if I have a 100 watt panel, which is approximately the size of these two right here, and something happens to it, guess what I just lost? 100 watts of panel. Plus, I can break it up. So, let's say this system doesn't really need 300 watts, but a system I have over here needs a couple more. Well, I could take two over here, whatever. I can kind of shift it up, move it around. And the main reason I did this is because an object in my hand today, in this environment we're living in, an object in my hand today is better than an object in the mail, and an object in the mail is better than money in the bank. Because money in the bank is nothing but digits on the screen. Now all these wires, everything, every bit of this is coming right into this system. Let's see if I can open this up and show you what it looks like. Alright, this is opening up inside here. I've got a 500 watt charging, uh, a solar charger. So my, my actual, these are the uh, solar panel wires coming in and they come into this main hub right here which transists it down into one single wire going into the charge controller right now I've got three of these batteries I showed you in the second video and they are linked in parallel in essence positive 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 negative negative so I'm maintaining 12 volts I'm not going up to 36 volts or 24 volts I am maintaining 12 across the bank I want to stick with 12 now I have all my connections here on the positive and all my connections back here on the negative. And that also includes my power inverter. This is an 800 watt power inverter. And we're going to talk about what that does here in just one minute. And it's because it's very important. All right, all of this though is running everything that's inside my shack. Now, you'll notice there are two leads. This one here, that is a 110 line. I have this here, that's a 12 line, and this is just an extra 110 line that literally runs right to here. So if I wanted to, you know, have power outside in the yard for some reason, instead of having to open up the trunk, I can simply take that, run an extension to there, plug it in, and now I've got an outside power source that I can run skill saws or whatever I need to from without having the trunk lit open just something I threw in there for kicks and giggles. But both of these lines are coming out right here and you can see them going right down to the ground. There's the 110, there's the 12. And I've dug them under the ground and ran them all the way to that shack right there. So everything's nice and under the ground and that is my mast where all of my combo antennas are on. Now, let's see what it looks like inside. All right, so this is basically kind of uh, our combo shack. That system's running these 12 volt lights. I have them in both ends of the barn and it does really, really well at night lighting this area up. Uh, this is our main radio that we're running right here. It's a Yaesu uh, 2980. 
solid piece of equipment. I, I am absolutely smitten with that radio. I love it. I got, of course, your your doomsday CB radio that everybody has to have, although nobody's going to really be on it. It's worth the crap. Anyways, I also have my charging bank back here where I'm charging all my handheld radios. So any guys that I have that are pulling guard that are, you know, these guys are rotating out, they're able to charge their bats right here for their handheld radios. And all of that, including the lights, are all running off of that battery bank. So is one other thing, which all of that I have ran off of one battery. So why is three? This big butt chest deep freezer. So let me give you a, try to reverse the camera for that. That right there, that big chest deep freezer is why I have three batteries. All right, now I've got it off the, it's, it's on the grid right now just so that you can kind of, you know, that is a timer clock and that is a very essential piece of gear. And I picked it up for like 11 bucks at a local hardware store. This chest freezer is full of meat. All right, now what happens is during the daytime and I'm able to charge it, I put it on this guy right here. So it stays plugged in. I won't have to unplug it once I get it, uh, get it set up good. This here will cut it off during the night hours and cut it back on during the day hours. It's winter time. The chest freezer will hold because it's very insulated and everything in it's frozen. One of the best things I was ever told about a chest freezer, you want to keep it cold and save energy, fill it full of meat. As soon as you fill it up, it's like a big block of ice and it just holds. So I'm able to do all that on a timer. So I'm not draining my batteries totally dead at night, which means I can continue to run radios and lights and everything else because they don't draw nearly as much power as this. But that is why I had to have an 800 watt inverter inside that chest. And that's also why I had to have three batteries is solely for this chest freezer. But how much better does that make our life when I'm able to store meat? So if I drop a deer today, I'm not having to kill myself to eat every bit of it. I can just put it in the dang deep freezer and eat on it as I need to go. Makes my life a little bit easier, right? Alright, so we're going to do a close-up on this here system. So again, you got your 12-volt lights. I got the CB. I got my Yesu. You got my charging station back here where I'm actually charging uh, my handheld radios. And for some reason, that one's not wanting to work proper. There it goes. And I got this timer switch. I wanted it to unplug so you can kind of see a little bit better. I got this timer switch where I'm able to adjust my, uh, well, how much time, the you know, when it cuts on, when it cuts off. So how much juice is used by this. And I've got lights in the back part of the barn here. So you can see here. With all my extra combo crap, antennas and batteries and stuff. And then there's that. And that is what we're going to talk about in our next video. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about the wiring length. Alternating current AC doesn't matter as much about the length. Uh, it's not as susceptible to the length, but DC is. You have to have a large, the further you're running it, and the more amp as you're pulling on it, the larger the, uh, the actual wire has to be. So you'd have to have something like the size of your thumb if you're going, you know, say 50 feet or something, and you're pulling a heavy amp draw. I'm running a 12, uh, a 12 gauge underground house wire, 30 feet, and I checked it, and I'm losing 0.2 volts from the box to the radio. And my radio, it's an 80 watt radio, so it's got a pretty heavy uh, amp draw on it. Point I'm making is, those are things you kind of got to have figured out in your head. If I, if you measure at the battery and you've got 12.5 volts, and you measure at the you know the radio or wherever it is you ran the end of that that wire to, and you now have 11.9, you're gonna fry your stuff. You cannot have more than a 0.5 volt drop whenever you're dealing with communication equipment. That is why this is kind of a little bit of an engineering job and a little bit of a communications job. All right, your combo guys should be able to wire all this up and your engineers should be able to make the solar stuff work and the two of them should be able to put it together. 
And that's the reason why we put the solar and battery and all that stuff and integrate it into our communications manuals. So thank you very much for watching. Y'all have a great day.